Amen. It was a beautiful instrumental. I believe that everyone enjoyed it. Um, it's indicating that music in heaven is wonderful. But music on earth is also wonderful. What do you say? And when we go to heaven, we will enjoy a lot of music. So it's always good to start enjoying it here on earth. It's always good to be in church. What do you say? Amen. So as we come together, I want to take this opportunity to say welcome to everyone. Most churches are open at this time. Um, as a matter of fact, all the churches in District 1, which is the district that I'm in, I am in, which would involve all of um, the Tampa Bay area, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Ocala, all the churches, that's District 1. And when we get together as pastors, we, we, we meet together, we are Still meeting on Zoom. District 2 would be like Orlando. And um, District 3 is South Florida. And um, West Palm Beach and so forth. So we uh, are meeting uh, regional for a time. And we hardly see the others from the other areas. Because usually... We have once or twice per year all together, but since COVID, we have not done that. So uh, that reminds me of the time when we will be in heaven and there be no more separation, there be no more division. So let us all tune our hearts, our minds, and prepare for heaven where Jesus will be. As we sung that beautiful song this morning, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Because Jesus has done everything possible for us to be in heaven. And we have the opportunity to live today by faith and by his grace, preparing for that great and notable day. I want to also say thank you for I received a special card this morning as I came through the door on a, a bunch of flowers. I left the flowers in the foyer, but the card saying, even now, God goes before you to make a way to give you strength to reveal his love. And, um, and here it says, Pastor, you are surrounded with lots of prayer as God keeps you in his grace, with love from your Wesley Chapel Church. So we are, I am thankful for prayers and for the constant encouragement. Uh, God has been blessing, and I can say praise be to God. He has been blessing me, and... Um, not every day I feel the same. Someday I feel better than some days. Yesterday I was able to make more than 10,000 steps. 10,000 steps is a lot of steps. So I was able to make about 10,239 steps yesterday. And some other days I walk three miles, but yesterday would be more than three miles. And I was able to mow the lawn. And uh, so this indicates that God is his blessing. So we praise God for the blessing each day. And we look forward to the day when there will be no sickness. There will be no uh, discouragement. There will be no um, what else? No debt. What else? No plagues. 
no tears, no pain, no coronavirus. And thank God it's kind of simmering down, but I also want to say uh, keep being cautious because it's still around. It's still in the air. Many are vaccinated, and, uh, but the virus is still around. So still being cautious, and God is going to continue to bless and keep us safe. We are so thankful to God that he has kept us safe since we have started church 90, uh, uh, that, is just, uh, that is last year, August, so we have been kept safe. The Riverview, we have not gone back to church yet. We are still on Zoom. And you may not see Brother Osmar Farah today because he is on a, on a mission. He is our preacher today on Zoom for the Riverview. So he's on a special mission for the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? All right. So God is good to us. And today we will speak on the subject, difficult times ahead, difficult times ahead, but despite difficult times ahead, we do not need to fear. So let us bow our heads as we uh, talk to our God. Father in heaven, I pray that you will just be with us today and bless me as I present your message to your people and keep us uh, focus on your word, Lord, and prepare us for that great day when you shall come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so today's message, difficult times ahead. And um, someone said that the church is obsessed with eschatology. That is the end time events and the second coming of the Lord. He, also, he said that we are to forget that and focus on making this a better place or a better world for people to live in. However, I would say great men have tried that for nearly 6,000 years, but it has not yet worked. And we have seen in the book in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, or uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 rather, and verse 1 through 5, the word of the Lord says, but know this, that in the last days, what will happen? Perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And uh, Paul said, from such people turn away. Amen. Oh, beloved friends, it is important because perilous times are here. Are we living in perilous times? Yes. I hasten to say yes, as perilous times are times that are harsh, times that are troubling, difficult, dangerous, Painful, fierce, grievous, and hard to deal with. These are times that different people have different experience. And this word perilous describes a society that is barren of virtue, but abounding with vice. Our society with its drive-by shooting. It's still going on in many areas. Drive-by shooting, serial killing, rapes, Satanism. I say, beloved, violence, riots, uh, racism, immortality, uh, immorality, 
child molestation, drug abuse, and uh, uh, murderers. It is characterized what we call perilous times. And you have even seen uh, for the past week uh, one of the murderer, he killed his own wife, he killed his daughter, and killed his own son. And he was in court defending himself. He tried to kill his son. He, his son escaped. We are thankful for that. He, he, he escaped, but he was defending himself in court. And his little nine-year-old son, he had him inter interrogating him. Can you believe that? This is perilous time indeed. And beloved friends, well, he was found guilty, but it seemed like he wise up and decided to have a lawyer discuss the, the, the other phase, the punitive part that they will, when they will sentence him because some people want him to get the death penalty, but some want him to live in jail for the rest of his life. I want to say, beloved friends, these are the times that we are living in. We are living in. I would say due to the breakdown of the family unit and rejection of God's law, our society is out of control. Clearly, as believers today, we live in perilous times. And Paul uh, prophesied and said that evil men and seducers will wax or grow worse and worse. And even Christ said in the first part of John 18, 36, that his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not of this world. And I happen to believe what Jesus had said because we can trust God, but we cannot trust men to create a better world. Some believe that we can create a better world. It was, it was um, Sir Thomas More. Sir Thomas More, uh, he lived about 1477 through uh, 1535, Moore was an English lawyer, writer, and statement. He was the first person to write of a utopia which describes a perfect imaginary world, a good place, uh, offering a better way of life, getting everything, uh, getting everything, everyone getting everything that they need, nothing lacking, but it never worked. It never worked. I say, beloved Christian friends, that it was Dr. Henry Kissinger. He reported in the New York Times. He said, there is posed upon me a kind of occupational schizophrenia. As a statement, I must project optimism and cause people to think that things are going to get better. Yes, he said he will project and cause people to think that things are going to get better. However, I want to also continue because he said that, he said, first of all, he's a historian. And as a historian, I must admit that Civilization, as we know it, cannot last much longer. Can you believe that? He is a man that was working in politics, but he's saying civilization as it is cannot last much longer. That's many years. That is truly a sad commentary on the human nature. An atmosphere of prosperity, I want to say, is not the best atmosphere to develop what we call a spiritual nature. Yes, it is true. It is, it is, it is, it is important to recognize that 
as it stated, when there is material prosperity, there is spiritual famine. Did you hear me? When there is material prosperity, there is spiritual famine. When there is peace and safety, men live in the pleasure of sin. When there is war in the land, there is a spiritual awareness. And that's what the world is like. Remember the deluge in Louisiana, Hurricane Katrina about 205, and then we have also 9-11 in 201, which turned the country into a very solemn place, turning men and women's heart to God for a short while. Churches were filled and people were praying. But I want to say today, let the sky turn into brass. Then the people will begin to pray. But other times they don't remember God. Many tend to think of God in terms of emergency. And let me say like, some college students who only write or call home when they are in trouble or when they need money. So the judgment will come, not because God is sadistic, but because human nature demands the discipline of trial. You know, Isaiah, Isaiah uh, wrote with authority, not only of the certainty of the judgment of God upon a sinful people, but also of the greatness of the love and the mercy of God. And that is why I go back to our scripture lesson, because it says, with my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes. By my spirit within me, I will seek you early. For when your judgment are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn what? Righteousness. Let grace be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of un uh, uprightness, he will deal unjustly and will not Behold the majesty of the Lord. That's what Isaiah said. And I want to say today, beloved Christian friends, that the righteous long to be like God and desire to be with him in his kingdom. Are you longing to be with God? The earnest desire of God's people is for a fuller manifestation of his will that they may walk in the ways and fulfill his purpose. It is, is this your will and your desire? Oh, beloved friends, I would say it is mine. Isaiah said, with my heart, with my whole heart, I desire you. Isaiah souls. Isaiah's soul, I would say, yearn for God. is similar to that of the psalmist David. For the psalmist David yearns for God in the midst of distress. And the word of the Lord uh, stated here, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul, do what? Thirst. For God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Isaiah was thirsting for God. And David was thirsting for God. And we can recognize that God is a God of love. Because we notice that some of us have cried out at times to our God. Where is God? Where are you, God? But we cannot give up hope. We must 
maintain our hope in our God. Again, that's why the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and verse 9, we read these words, with my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. For when your judgment are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will do it. We learn righteousness. When your judgment is in the land, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. Isaiah is actually restating, in short, what is stated in verse 3 and 4, what we had in our scripture lesson. Verses 3 and 4. You will keep him in where? Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, that is in Yahweh, the Lord is everlasting strength. We praise God for that. God has given us his strength on a daily basis. And there is always uh, something lacking in the hearts and lives of men that nothing in this world can supply except our God. Do you believe that? Yes, or I believe that I have heard some call our day what is an age of anxiety. An age of anxiety, a time in which people are stressed and are under tremendous pressure. Even in this time that we are living in, many are under tremendous pressure for the past uh, uh, months or year. We, many have been under tremendous pressure. Young people, older people, have committed suicide because they cannot meet with their friends, they cannot go out, they cannot do much, and they are not able to do what they used to do, so they are under tremendous pressure. I also will say drug manufacturers uh, market billions of dollars in sleeping pills and tranquilizer each year. You know, I, I, I have been taking some pills for the past year. You know, in all my life, I've been more a healthy man, Brother Jim. But for the past year, I've not been that healthy. But I praise God because I can move around. I can do things. And I've been taking some medication. And especially one medication is to keep me alive. Sometimes I go through great length to explain it to people, but when I finish explaining it, they said, trust in God. And that is important, trust in God. Because when doctors said, there's no cure, we said, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. But the good thing, I've never taken tranquilizer nor sleeping pill in all my life. My, many people cannot sleep except they are taking tranquilizer and sleeping pill. Oh, beloved friends, I want to say also uh, there has been what we call psychologists conduct stress-reducing seminar. But the prophet Isaiah who had seen a lot of frightening vision, knew the true secret of peace. Did you hear me? Isaiah the prophet knew this true secret of peace. He said, only when the mind is fixed on God, and when the soul yearns for God, then and only then can we have peace? Isaiah said that for when your judgment are in the land or in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. There are those who become so engrossed with the things of this world that only the judgment of God will arouse them to the perils 
of the world. Oh, beloved friends, the opposite of judgment is favor. Some do not appreciate kindness or learn anything from it. Unfortunately, when love and kindness are shown, they don't reciprocate it. Isaiah stated in, uh, Isaiah, in verses 10 and 11, it said, let grace be shown. Let what be shown? Let grace be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. He, he, he said, Lord, when your hands is lifted up, they will not see, but they will see and be ashamed for their envy of people. Yes, the fire of your enemies shall devour them. That's what the Lord, what God is saying as we read Second Timothy. In Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, one through four. Here it says, "But know this, but what? Know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving." Slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. A co-worker of mine is going down to Jamaica uh, this coming week to bury his brother. You know, his brother is just 42 years and he, someone broke into his apartment and hacked him to death with machete. You know, Pastor Robinson, maybe you, some of you know Pastor Robinson, Bernard Robinson. So this is what the Bible is talking about. Brutal, this traitors, headstrong, lovers of pleasures, perhaps, I don't know what they went into his apartment for and the police have found who did it as yet, but these are some of the evil things that happen in our world. I say, beloved, we can see this clearly in the political system today, but it is also prominent in the society. God's church has a work to do, you know. Sometimes I walk around in my very community, the very community I, I lived in, and I saw houses and houses and houses and houses. We can give out a few books, yes, but there are so many houses. And I said, what is being done for these individuals to tell them about the goodness of God, to tell them about Jesus Christ? Jesus said, the labor, the, 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 the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And if Jesus would stand here today, Jesus would say the same thing. Because the amount of building that is going on and so many gated community, who is there to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Beloved friends, we are living in a very serious time, but God's church has a work to do. Ellen White stated in the fifth volume of the testimony, page 463, that the work, the work that the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity will have to be done in a time of terrible crisis and forbidding circumstances. The warning which worldly conformity has silenced or withdrew or withheld must be given under the fiercest opposition of enemies of the faith. Because God said everyone will hear the message before he comes the second time. 
Oh yes, beloved Christian friends, we are living in a very, very, very serious time. The warning which worldly conformity has silenced or withheld must be given under the fiercest opposition of our faith. This is a lesson from ancient Israel and a warning for the church today. Worldly conformity silence and inhibits the message, but God will must be done. God will not bring a judgment upon the world unless the warning is given. The judgment will come, and the judgment that I speak of is not just a retributive and punitive judgment, but also redemptive judgment. Because judgment have a redemptive dimension. Daniel said in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, we are encouraged by the scripture because it says at that time Michael will stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people and there shall be what? A time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the, that time. And at that time your people, God said, shall be delivered everyone who is found written in the book. Oh yes, beloved, we shall be delivered and we, shall, we can praise God. So now is the time to seek the Lord. The focus of the judgment is not only destructive but redemptive. The judgment will come to bring back men to God and to bring men back to Calvary and to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, beloved friends, many old hypocrites, I say, will return to church. Yet, many will also leave the church. When the judgment is on the land, it will force men into decision, calling the church into action and bringing us to our senses in a time of pleasure-seeking and worldly madness. In the ninth volume of the testimony, the ninth volume of the testimony, Ellen White reminds us, she said, the Spirit of God is what? Gradually, but surely being withdrawn from the earth. This was said many years ago, and many things are happening in our society, in our world. The condition of things in this world shows that troublous times are right upon us. Yes, troublous times are right upon us. It shows us, beloved, that bold robberies are going on. Bold robberies, theft and murder committed daily. Men possessed by uh, with demons, you know, they are all around, evil men. But we praise God and we put our trust in God that he is able because God's original plan has already been aborted. The, 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 the servant of the Lord said that we should be in the kingdom already. Here it says, we, we are here on borrowed time. We are now living on what we call a probationary time. The, ta the church has not been faithful. And we are thankful for faithful people. God through peace, uh, God through peaceful means has not been able to capture our time and enthusiasm for the finishing of the world. And that is why Peter in 2 Peter uh, tells us that the Lord is not slack. Or let's use this word. The Lord is not slow 
concerning his promises. As some men count slackness or count slowness, but is what? Long suffering to us, what? Or towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do you think all will come to repentance? No, not all will come to repentance, but God is willing that men and women will come to repentance. And if there is a delay in Christ's coming, it is because of the unwillingness of God for any to perish. But the book Patriarchs and Prophets in page 272 uh, reminds us that the Lord bears long with men and with the city mercifully giving them warning to save them from what? Divine wrath. But a time is coming when mercy will what? No longer finish it for me. Yes, a time is coming when mercy will be no longer. God cannot continue this forever. He promised that he will establish a kingdom when there be no more sin, there be no more death, and God will step off his, uh, his throne and said, it is finished, just like when he was on the cross and he bowed his head and said, it is finished. So let me conclude, my brothers and sisters, by saying God has given us, he has given his people an unpopular message. Do you think this message is unpopular? He had given his people an unpopular message, unpopular because of its uncompromising and its going to take this uncompromising message to get people ready for the awesome storm ahead of the church. Oh, beloved friends, the end time false teachers, I tell us, end time false teachers will mock us as we share this uncompromising message of Jesus and his soon coming. People will say the, 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 the Sabbath doesn't matter anymore. You don't need to keep the commandments anymore. Unbelieving people will ridicule the very idea of Christ's return. The message is uncompromising for God said through his prophet. And let me quote this text in Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58 verse 13 and 14. The word of the Lord says, it says 1 and 14, but it's 13 and 14. And just the first part of 14. It said, if you turn away, what? Your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall delight yourself in the Lord, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And it continues to say that God will cause you, beloved, to ride upon the high places of the earth. God has a plan for his people. And we are looking forward to that great and notable day. And beloved friends, that is why we are here. That is why we serve God. That is why we serve and study his holy word so that we can know what God's plan is. However, when we fully understand how central the gospel is to God's plan, we will recognize the importance of uh, sharing God's message with those around us. Sometimes it's those in our own household. Sometimes it's our co-workers. But friends, 
Although we are living in a grand and awful time, let us put our hope in God and, and uh, remain committed to sharing the uncompromising message to a world that has been separated from God. Ellen White descriptively uh, leave us with a picture of which we should all long for. She said in the book, Great Controversy, a good book, should read it over and over uh, every year. It says, soon there appear in the east a small black cloud. A small what? A small black cloud about half the size of a man's hand. Well, some men's hand are bigger than some and some are smaller than some. But I think mine is in the middle. But it's a half the size of a man's hand. And I tell us, beloved, that it is the cloud which surrounds the Savior and which are uh, seen in the distance to be shrouded in darkness. The people of God know this to be the sign of the Son of Man. We are looking forward to that day when Jesus will come. Beloved friends, if we are not ready for that day when Jesus comes, it will be too sad. So we are to be ready. We wait the glorious coming of God. Therefore, let us be encouraged that God has given us the uh, what we call the power of the Holy Spirit to live a free, to live free from the from, 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 from sin and to overcome the power of Satan. He has given us time and time again to make our calling and election sure, giving us times of opportunity to do great things for him, sharing his message so others will experience the real life-changing power of the gospel. Day by day, as we study and as we pray, our lives must be changed and our character must be like Jesus. And beloved friends, we are to be earnest. We are to be anxious for Jesus to come. We cannot live in this world any longer. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Let me see a show up and just to confirm that you are ready for Jesus to come. I will put up my two hands, beloved friend. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a wonderful day. Can you imagine? I say it all the time. All the people from Adam's time coming down to our time. Those who are righteous, those who are seeking, those who are have been faithful to God. You know, we have been studying about the covenant promise of Jesus Christ. You know, when we studied about the covenant promise, yes, Adam did sin, but he never bowed his knee to an idol. He was faithful to his true and living God throughout his life. Set his son was also faithful. Coming down, we have, now we have Methuselah, we have Enoch, and we have Shem. These are unbroken line that has been faithful and never bow their knees to Baal. And then we had Abraham. Abraham, many people will say he was among a heathen nation nation, but he never bow his knees to bear. Patriarchs and prophets tells us that he was faithful among the unfaithful, uncompromising among the compromising. He stood faithful and never bowed his knees to Baal. And God looked down the generation and looked at his heart and made 
Abraham, the father of the faithful. And if we are faithful, then we are Abraham's seeds and we are children of the living God. What a day that will be. Let us be faithful, beloved friends, because God is coming soon. Loving Lord and Father, we pray today that you will empower us by your Holy Spirit. We pray today, Lord, that you will give us the zeal and the enthusiasm and the earnestness and the anxiety to see your glorious return. Prepare us, Lord, for that great and notable day. And when you come, O oh, Father, may each one of us hear your glad voice. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. What a day that will be. Oh, Father, prepare us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing.